Good morning. My name is Daniel Knapp, and I'm the agriculture instructor at Hagerman High School. And today we're learning uh, about rangeland management, especially uh, grass identification. I'll do an activity called the uh, dichotomous key, and it really helps for grass ID if you're doing the, the range, the FFA state range contest. For you young instructors out there, uh, drop me a line, give me a holler if you're interested in, in doing more range stuff. I personally think the range curriculum that University of Idaho and IRRC have put online is some of the best user-friendly curriculum, and I encourage you to get involved. Uh, we also have taught several uh, uh, CSI dual credit courses, and, and this kind of funnels into our upper level uh, courses in which we are graduating students with plan ID and principles range management, and also we've had kids take a GIS class. So this is my freshman at class and we have our district range uh, contest coming up we've been covering uh, some range stuff and so we are going to do a dichotomous key it's uh, fairly self-explanatory dichotomous key just uh, takes certain factors and uh, in organisms and gives us uh, an opportunity to identify and split them up and group them as we ask certain questions so with grass id uh, I, I start with a blank piece of paper, so uh, all these students have a blank piece of paper. Uh, there is PowerPoints on online. If you look, this PowerPoint right here that I have up is on the uh, Idaho State uh, Range site. Uh, it's a pretty good PowerPoint, and it, it gives you the, the information about each plant. Um, I will use that, and I'll also use plant mounts that University of Idaho can, uh, Range Club will, will send you. Um, so let's start with grass ID. So the first, first basic thing you gotta ask yourself about grass ID is try to come up with two or three things that you can use to identify and put them into main groups. So the first thing I, I think that you need to do is to ask yourself, the first question is, is it a grass or is it Grass-like. So, grasses are hollow and they have jointed stems. All right, hollow. And jointed. Whereas grass-like are, uh, they would have solid stems and they would be, they could be round, they could be triangle, sedges, or triangle. Uh, the, we hear the term sedges have edges. If you roll a sedge in between your fingers, it'll have edges. Uh, grass will have leaves coming off of two, one plane, two sides, whereas a sedge could have leaves coming off of three sides. So, ask yourself that question. Is it hollow and jointed, or is it solid? And it could be triangle, it could be round. Uh, once you find that out, if you look, uh, there are some rushes and sedges, and they, they would end up being um, in your grass-like plant. And we'll look at those on, and identify those later on. <coughs> but what I really want to focus on today is the grass identification. This is probably the hardest part of the rangeland plants to identify, and so we're going to start sorting through those. The first thing, question I ask is, it is, is it a spike or is it a panicle? So we, we ask ourselves that question, spike or panicle? So what a spike is, if we look at a grass and the seeds are attached to the main stem, then that would be a spike. If we look at it and the, there is a small, the main stem, then you have a small stem that's called a panicle, then you have the seed head. Uh, that is a, uh, that would be a panicle. This small stem attached to the main stem is a panicle. So ask yourself, is it a spike or a panicle? And if it is a spike, then uh, the next question you gotta ask yourself it, from spike is you come off and you ask, and also panicle, you come off 
and you ask yourself the question, is there ons or no ons? So, and also you, you can definitely sort through them by the size of the on. Uh, there is a few plants that have very short ons and a few plants that have really long ons. Um, so as you're setting this up, uh, right now we can set this up and we can start, there's only uh, students, how many grasses? Is there 12 grasses we're gonna learn or 15? Um, why don't you count them up? Who's got their, their grass list out? Uh, just the grasses. Kyla's counting them up here, she'll tell us in a second. 22, 22 grasses. So then let, let's, start, let's start putting these in certain uh, categories and we'll start talking about each one. Let's start at the top of the list and uh, I'm going to ask the students to give me, give me the grass and we're going to put it in the, the category it belongs. So since I'm picking on Kyla, why don't you tell me the first grass on the list? Baltic Rush. Okay, Baltic Rush. Alright, so Baltic Rush, it's a rush. Okay, it's got a solid stem. Uh, there it is, Baltic Rush. It's a perennial native and undesirable and undesirable. Really quick, this is probably review for a lot of us, but um, the perennial means it will live year after year after year. Annual means it completes its growth uh, cycle and completes its life cycle in one year. Uh, native means it, it was put here a long, long time ago. It's been here for a long, long time. Uh, and introduced means man somehow or another has put, put it here, whether it's on purpose or accident, man has brought it here. Undesirable or desirable on the grazers and the browsers. A grazer is an animal that selects for grass, so that would be like a cow or an elk. Um, all your cattle, your sheep, uh, browsers would be like your deer and your goats. They select for forbs and woody plants. So this, this is our, our rush. It is, we take a look at a rush, it is not jointed. It is basically one spike. And the thing about a rush uh, as it comes up is the floret or the seed head would be on the side and nothing on the top. So that is Baltic rush. All right, so the next one is, all right, what is the next one? Basin wild rice. Okay, so we have basin wild rice. This is a very tall plant. It doesn't look like, what do we think? Grass? It is a grass, it is hollow, it is jointed. Is it got arms <laughs> or is it got uh, a spike or a panicle? Yeah, it it's a spike. If you look at that. So there is, uh, the seed heads are attached directly to the set. So that would be a spike. The next question is, is it no ons or does it have ons? And the answer to that is there's no ons. So the, under no ons, we're gonna start grouping up. We have basin, wild rye. And one thing I noticed about basin wild rye is if you take a cross section of that plant of the seed head, the seeds are actually going every direction and it's a very thick seed head, it's a very tall plant, um, and it's a bunch of grass. So that's base and wall rye. Okay, next plant. Cool. Uh, blue bunch wheatgrass. Okay, blue bunch wheatgrass. Let's take a look at blue bunch wheatgrass. Okay, blue bunch wheatgrass. It, it is a grass. It, it is shaped similar to, uh, this is what it, it is, the first question, spike or panicle? <coughs> it's a spike. Uh, all the wheatgrasses are spikes, and it has a long panicle that in the fall, it, the panicle actually kind of droops and bends over. Okay, it's not a very thick seed head. Like the Basin Wild Rye has a lot, is a very thick uh, seed head. It has seeds coming off every direction. Whereas this 
is an alternating. All your wheat grasses have what I've I refer to as a chicken ladder. For instance, if it has a seed head going this way and then it'll have a seed head going the other way, your traditional chicken ladder is something that looks like this. So this is good to know. I am missing. You guys are not seeing my uh, chicken ladder. So I'll move my chicken ladder over. So the, a chicken ladder, a, a traditional chicken ladder is alternating pegs on either side. And this wheat grasses all have chicken ladders. Some are closer to, to them really tightly packed and others are not, but they're alternating the seed heads as you go up. That's a chicken ladder. So a blue bunch will it also have, uh, it would have ons. So we're gonna we're gonna put this one in here. Blue bunch wheatgrass. All right, and it it would be shaped like this. You'd have chicken ladder, and it'd go out kind of like that. And it, the on would be kind of bending. All right, next, Tim. After blue bunch, wheatgrass, what is the next plant? Or cheatgrass. There's blue bunch, it's a perennial native of uh, Okay, cheatgrass, it's also known as downy brome, also known as uh, June grass, also known as scientific name is Bromus tectorum. So it, this would have a panicle. So it is, a cheatgrass is related to your your other brome grasses is your mountain brome and your smooth brome. They, they have panicles, and the cheatgrass is kind of droop, has a drooping panicle. And it is kind of turns uh, a little bit almost purplish in color as it matures. Um, obviously, it is uh, the invasive annual species that we really struggle to manage. Daniel introduced a new you. Cheatgrass can be grazed by livestock, but only early in the spring. Not so much as, as it matures, it's not the best. So, uh, drooping panicle, um, and that is, that is cheatgrass. Cheatgrass. Okay, next, Preston. What's the next one after cheatgrass? Crested wheatgrass, perennial, native, introduced. So it's a wheatgrass, so then it's going to be a spike, and it also is a chicken ladder. If you look at a wheatgrass seed head, it's a chicken ladder. It's actually very, very tight chicken ladder, but if we were to take a look at this, you would see that it is tightly packed together like a chicken ladder. Okay, so that is... Uh, crested wheatgrass. So I would put it in the spike category and I would put it in the no, uh, let's see, it would have no ons and it would be crested wheatgrass. Okay. It is introduced. A lot of people think introduced plants are all bad. This plant specifically is responsible for lots of uh, forage. Yes? What is on? Okay, an on. Good question. I, I neglected to cover that. So an on is basically if you have your seed head, it is a hair. Oh, thank you. You can, you can speak up a little loud. You can say, Mr. Knapp, they can't see. I need to probably come over here and draw a line. Where, where are we at, right here? Can you see that? Yeah, right there. Okay. Right on the edge? Yeah, right there. Right like there. right where your face is. So right here. Right there, just draw a line. You got it. This may be the practice run for, for tomorrow's 
Grass. Okay, so crested wheatgrass. Um, oh, no, we're talking about awns, right? Yeah. So awns, you have a seed, whether it's a spike or it could be a panicle, but at the end of the seed, you have a hair basically like appendage coming off that, that, that seed. Now, something to think about as far as forage values, um, awns have a tendency to be pokey and spiky. So the more awns a plant has, usually the less desirable it is for an animal to eat it. Something like crested wheatgrass, so it, this is a great forage plant, and it, if you've got crested wheatgrass that's up maybe two feet, and you've got a foot of snow, and it's sticking above the snow, this is, this is a pretty good forage. That seed head had a, has lots of energy. If you're trying to run cows or, or cattle or elk are, are on the range and it's winter, this is something that's pretty sturdy and uh, sticks up above the snow. The other thing about crested wheat is it is much more fire resistant than cheatgrass. And I've seen uh, fires in which it burnt the cheatgrass all around, did not burn the crested wheat. So that's something to think about. Um, all right, next next plant. What do we got, Morgan? Elk sedge. Elk sedge. Okay. So elk sedge is perennial native DD. Now, if it's a sedge, a couple things we're going to notice about this elk sedge. One is um, it is going to have a triangle stem. Now, if you're at a contest and there is one plant that's identified and that's the plant you have to identify, you can't go and, and handle it and touch it. But if you're at a contest and you see that plant that you're supposed to identify and you see the exact same sample off to the side, you can, uh, if it's not a, a plant identified, you can go, go look at it and rub it between your fingers. If you rub a triangle stamp between your fingers, it's going to be rough. You're going to feel the vibrations. Sedges have edges. Everybody say that. Sedges have edges. Sedges have edges. There you go. A little late, but good. But good. She said it. Okay, that's elk sedge. They kind of have a funky seed head right on top. If you look at it, it's, it's like a pretty small seed. It's kind of a goofy looking thing. All right, what do we got next? Ms. Cotton. Um, foxtail barley. Foxtail barley. Okay, something to note about foxtail barley. Does it have long arms? Yeah. Yes. yes. Barley, long arms, right? What is its forage value? You, you, you. Okay, things don't want to eat. You know, animals don't want to always eat stuff with long arms. Um, so it is a spike. So I put down here foxtail barley. It is a spike, and it has. Um, it is a spike with lots of arms, very long arms. So it looks bushy. Foxtail barley. Okay, cruising right along. What's next? Natasha. Uh, Idaho fescue. Okay, Idaho fescue. Good old Idaho. So, a couple things about this plant that is, uh, needs to be noted. One is that it, it's most confused with Sandbird bluegrass. But the way you tell the difference is, so first of all, let's look at it. It's got very small panicles. There is a panicle there. So we're gonna call it a panicle. Okay, Idaho fescue. Uh, is that? Yeah. Go do, is that right? No. Go on three, but your clock is off a minute. Oh, you're well done. Okay, so when we're done, we're just going to come over here and we're going to hit stop. 